Well, I was told that it sounded a little rough on the first broadcast, so I'm going to try this again. And I'm just I'm just live on Facebook, but I do want to share what the Lord had put on my heart for tonight again. And um, we're going to get these kinks worked out this week, so by Sunday we will be ready to roll. Revelation chapter 8. We're going to start with the first verse. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. It's amazing that in chapter 7, you see those that have been worshiping God vocally in verses 10 through 12. We see that and cry with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the, and about the elders and about the four beasts and fell before the throne and, and their, on their faces and worshipped God saying amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So we see this worship taking place and then we see this silence. Whenever there's silence in the book of Revelation, you need to be careful because more judgment is getting ready to happen. We see in verse 2, And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now we understand this to be literally angels that have been given trumpets to sound. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Now when we think of altar, we think of maybe, you know, Someone being saved at the altar, a backslider coming home at the altar. But we see here that the altar was meant to be used first and foremost for worship of God. We see it in the Old Testament. We see it where, where Abraham sacrificed the ram in Isaac's place on the altar. We see them build an altar after God did something. Noah did after the ark situation. We see it in several places of scripture. So I want you to understand something this evening. Though we look at the altar sometimes for salvation or for backsliders, it's really for the Christians. And wherever you are, you need to build an altar for God. Amen. And smoke of the incense which came from with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it to the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings in the earthquake. Now this reminds the reader of what happened with Moses on Mount Sinai when the power of God fell. But here is the judgment of God fallen. And the seven angels, verse 6, which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel, angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees was burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. You see, when an angel sounds a trumpet, it means judgment's coming. And when you look in the Old Testament, Joel chapter 2, verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet of Zion, Sound the alarm in my holy mountain. You see that take place. And then verse 8 says, And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with, a, with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. And a third part of the creatures which were in the sea had life and died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. 
And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of that star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now when you look in the Old Testament, we see the term Wormwood, which means bitter. We see it in the Hebrew in Ruth 1.20. When they return to Bethlehem and Naomi said, Don't call me Naomi, blessed, call me Mara, which is bitter. We see it in Exodus 15 23 about wormwood. Though, though this is a star, and I believe it's a literal star that falls or meteor, it makes the waters bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I heard, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of their other voices the trumpets of three angels were about to sound and this begins Revelation 8 the first woe was getting ready to happen then there's two more woes afterwards I want you to understand something tonight what we're seeing right now in our world today is nothing compared to what is getting ready to happen. Jesus is coming soon. Let's pray tonight. We got several needs to pray for. And once again, I duly apologize for the earlier broadcast being so staticky and stuff. I'm trying to get the sound right for Sunday and everything. So we I redid this, just a little synopsis to where we can you can have this to study and look at. Next week we're going to look at Revelation chapter 9. So let's pray over our needs. Father, we love you, God, and we praise you. We give you glory and honor tonight. We lift unto you, Brother Jimmy Hester, Lord, that God you would touch him, be with him tomorrow as he has this procedure done, and Lord, protect him, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray, God, for Donnie Duncan tonight, Lord, that you would touch him at the point of his need. We pray tonight, God, that, Lord, you would touch um, Cecil Button, God, and do a, do a work for him in the hospital. Lord, as I, as I saw Rhonda today at the grocery store, Rhonda Wright, Lord, I pray that you would touch her, give her strength. Lord, I pray for Vonda White tonight, Lord, that, God, you would touch her body, Lord. She's one of our neighbors, and she needs a touch from you. I pray tonight, God, that you be with Sue Wilson, who's, who needs a touch from you, needs healing, God. I pray for Sister Opal, God, that, Lord, you would protect her in the name of Jesus. I ask, God, that, Lord, you would be with my dad and encourage him, Lord, as he... Still grieves, Lord, over my mother, even to this day, Lord. They would have been married 47 years yesterday. Give him strength. I pray for Linda Wilson, God, that you would touch her, Lord. I pray for Louise Shute, God, that you would be with her, Father. I ask, God, that, Lord, you be with Gail Edwards, Lord, and touch her in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I pray that you'd be with Mike Ingold and give him strength. I pray for Stoy Lankford, a retired minister in our state, God, that you would be with him in the name of Jesus, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would touch every one of these needs. And, God, that you would have your way. Meet every need, Father, tonight, Lord. Help us, God, and give us strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to the second try of this. Um, let me remind you that if you want to support the church and feel led to do so, um, you can do it one of three ways. You can bring an offering by the parsonage. You can mail it to 
3605 Summit Avenue, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27405, or you can use Cash App, and it's the dollar sign NGCOG. So there's one of three ways you can support the church. We love you. We thank you for tuning in. And I pray that this, this second go around was better than the first. And uh, let me encourage you to tune in Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and at 5 p.m. And we will be looking at the Word of God together again. Be looking out also for Brother Paul's Sunday school videos this week. And I pray that you and your family will continue to be blessed and that, that you would stay safe during this difficult time. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight.